the Bible as a whole, the entire thing, it's powerful. Throw it at someone's head, it's going to hurt. Powerful. Yeah. Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Cardia. I am a pastoralist. A pastoralist? And this is Frank, looking like a hooded figure, looking intimidating. It's funny that you could, like, the hooded figure in movies is either very good or very bad. Oh. Like a monk or like a scary something. Yeah. Interesting. That is interesting. Uh, you don't know what my name is. A pastoral figure. A pastoralist. Pastoralist. Um, I'm, I'm an Australian rancher. Oh, pastures. Yeah. I uh, I worked to get rid of my accent. Okay. But oh, you got a little Australian hat on. I'm Australian, yeah. Nice. I'm Australian, mate. Oh, there it is. Yeah. So they either they either call me a pastoralist or a grazier. G r a z i e r. You graze. I'm the person that owns what's called the station in America. We would call it a ranch, and I would be a rancher. But in Australia, it's called a station, and I'm called the pastoralist. Or the grazier. Pastoralist sounds like uh, fancy. Like you gotta be smart to be a. I think it sounds. I'm a pastoralist. I think it sounds spiritual. Because like pastor. Yeah. But it's pastoralist. Pastoralist. P pastor. P a s t o r. Oh, it's not u r e s t. Ah, linguistics. And also, if I was the cowboy, so that's the person who owns it. But if I was the cowboy, I I believe I'm the stockman. 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 Stock, Stockman. Spencer Stockman at your service. Is, is there what they would call the cowboy? But I there, own the place, so I'm the Is there horses in Australia? Yeah, because how else would I be a pastoralist? I don't know. Have you ever seen a horse in Australia? Is um, there even cows I've in never Australia? I've been to Australia. You mean I thought you're Australian. <laughs> You can't keep it, up your lies. You would be terrible on the no, stand. <laughs> I um I am a, I'm a virtual rancher. <laughs> a virtual rancher. Yeah. Okay. In like, the megaverse. Um, the they, metaverse. <laughs> metaverse. Oh, geez, Louise. They, um, of course they. That's why, of course, they have those things there. I don't know. They I, do. I don't think they have cows in Australia. They have the cows and the horses. No. And it's they also have winter. Yeah. Okay. They have I, winter. No, they don't. They have very cold winter. Have you ever seen snow in Australia? Yeah. I saw seen fires. I don't know about the snow, but we're they're going into winter right. I mean, we uh, as, as me as an Australian, we're going into winter right now. No, we're going into summer. That's oh, because you live in North America, and I live in the other America called Australia. That's not what they call it. <laughs> um, <laughs> how you guys doing? Uh, June second, baby. Uh, beautiful. Yeah. So, what day is it? Is it June second? Yeah. And it's Thursday. Good job. <laughs> Australians are a little on the slower side. Well, because for us, I'm already in Friday, so that's why. Really? Yeah. Wow. No, maybe. Yeah. Not. Yeah. Probably. I am right. Yeah. It, yeah. I mean, they're very far ahead. Uh, we are very far ahead. So you're you're on Thursday. So um, that's what I just wanted to find out. Yeah. <laughs> Here on Kirk and Crow, we are. Um, calling this Thursday. Yes. Um, yeah. What's been going on? The Instagram stories. We don't need to bore you to death by telling you about it. Just go over and have the excitement, yeah. you know? Yeah. How much can you explain a game? We keep telling our YouTube friends to go to Instagram. We have to tell our Instagram friends to come to YouTube. And we have to tell both friends to come to our house. We're having <laughs> a barbecue. I live in Australia. So yesterday was National Smile Day. Um, today is National Dentist Appreciation Day. And I'm just thinking like... Oh, I thought that was yesterday. Did dentists make that holiday? I said that on the podcast. You said that about Smile Day. Right. And now that it's Dentist Appreciation Day, I'm having second thoughts about Smiling Day because I think it's all conspiracy. Hear me out. Okay. They created National Smile Day. Everyone then smiles. Cheese. And then you see that you, you need help. You see the imperfections. It's like National Take Your Shirt Off Day. And then the next day is National uh, with, with, uh, Liposuction, liposuction day. Awareness Day. I we both said the same thing. Yeah. These dirty dentists. Nine out of dentists disapprove for this message. Nine out of dentists. Nine out of, <laughs> nine out of ten dentists probably approve that um, holiday. I want to find that one dentist. Because you know what? Some, for some reason, I trust him. Also, why know, is he willing to go against true, the grain? You're right. You ever saw that movie like the uh, right. 
the thirteenth juror or something. Sounds really famous and familiar. It's about like myself. A jury. Shout out Justice for Johnny. Johnny got his justice. It's an old movie, like your time. Dinosaurs. And um do, 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 do people know that Johnny Depp won the case? Johnny Depp won the you case. You were saying the same exact thing before the verdict came back. Johnny Depp won the case. Okay. Um, yeah, he got awarded the money, but it was never about the money. It was about the defamation. And just because... Remember what you're going to say? Yeah. Okay. Just because th- that jury said that he didn't do it and he was vindicated. Uh, he really wasn't. You can't unring a bell. Nope. And so... There will be people for the rest of his life who will have not gotten the memo or the update and they will think of him. So no matter, like you said, it wasn't about the money because it could never really be about the money. You can never pay to take back that you defamed this person. And so, uh, yes, it was fortunate that he had some justice, but... So many people didn't follow the case. So many people aren't aware. They're only peripherally aware. And, and they and they won't realize that he didn't do it. I watched a um, little mental smart man do an analysis on Donald Trump. And one of the things that they said that he was good at. It was it's not good. I mean, I don't think it's good. But he's good at doing it. Okay. Which is bringing up things. Saying things. But saying I'm not, I'm not saying it, and but then it's in people's heads. It's in people's heads. Well, I'm not saying the Muslims XXX, right. X, X, um, but who knows? And right. then all of a sudden, people, you can't get that out of the head, right? And so you know, Amber heard. Oh, well, I'm just saying he abused me, and it's like the court said he didn't. It's like, well, I said it, no, and now a lot of people are thinking. That's very it. true because even in the court, when you say something, and then the the other side objects, and then you say. Uh, the, the judge will say, you're correct. Don't say that. Yeah. And then she'll tell Sustained. she'll tell the court reporter um, to strike Admit it. That, oh yeah, strike it from the record. So when it goes to the jury, it's not there. They heard it. They heard it. They already it's heard it. It's all part of the plan. And you know what Amber heard? The Bible says, thou shall not kill. And people take, think that only is literally. Right. But you can kill someone's reputation. Right. You can kill their name. Yeah. You can't kill their soul ever. You can't because, ever kill some soul. Well, I mean... the. the you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor is is also a commandment um Facts. which is that but uh pressing a friend of ours friend maybe a family member <laughs> it was that oh, everyone's our family yesterday uh it, he works in a public place they were talking about the trial and oh i think it was before the verdict came in and then someone said he has to get off it's so obvious that she was lying and then someone else brought up casey anthony and said if casey anthony can get away with it amber heard can get away with it the woman was like, what's Casey Anthony? Oh. So not everybody knows. That's what I'm saying. Like, you know, I'm, you know, not everybody knows what everyone else knows. No. So and it's also the jury system. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I understand the jury system. I'm a fan of it because it gets rid of the idea that like a judge has all the power. Yeah. Only problem with it is you're getting people that aren't law controllers, controllers of law, law study and so with the Casey yeah. Anthony thing, there was a lot of people where I think some of the jurors came out after and said, oh, we didn't really know what we were doing. No, they never do. It was like we, we, cause they were like seeking the death penalty and the people were like, well, I don't want to do that. I don't yeah. want to do that. And it's like, you're the jury. You're, you're, you're not right. in charge of, of saying whether someone lives or dies. You were right. in charge of saying whether someone's guilty yeah. or innocent. Also end the death penalty. How about that? Yeah, absolutely. Yesterday, um, as a matter of fact, the jury said, we, we're ready. Here is our verdict. Yeah. So the judge called in, everyone come back. Come back. They they filled the seats and they had both sides and they had everybody ready. And she goes to read, read the paper and she realized they did it wrong. <laughs> and because she wouldn't open it yeah. alone. Yeah. So this is the first time they're opening it. So she had to say, okay, take this back. You didn't fill it out right. Um, so that's when I'm, they, and you got to give them a break. It's like they become lawyers within one day like yeah. you know they they don't really yeah but. um can you remember all the way back to what i had interrupted you about no i said will you remember will you remember yeah well, you talked forever yeah, you did <laughs> now who cares um whatever national rocky road ice cream day um forget about it who likes rocky road not me i 
used to. And I, it's not that I don't love it anymore, but I just don't even think about it. But when I was little, I, I feel loved like yeah, I feel Rocky like I used Road. to hear it a lot more often than yeah, I do. You're right. I feel like well, people used to talk about. You know Rocky what? Road. I'm going to tell you something about the old days because I'm just an all C rattle hand, rattle hand, a rattle hand, cattle and r- cattle ranch hand became rattle hands. <laughs> oh, I like it. <laughs> it's very. It's like a snake. Rattle hand. <laughs> um, <laughs> or, or it means you have like a, a Parkinson's come disease. Come on, <laughs> how is that? Anything that you want to say on here. Um, I'm just an all say pastoral. I don't know. Um, when I went, not when I heard, I heard about my grandparents talking. Uh, there weren't the ice cream choices that there are today. And Rocky Road was very the, the elaborate. Wildest. That was elaborate. That was yeah. a Sunday in a box. Yeah. Or a, or a pint and whatever. Because you had whatever. Is it nuts? Marshmallow? Yeah. Chocolate? chocolate chips i don't i don't know what it is but uh that was that was you had you had chocolate vanilla strawberry um you know mint chocolate chip maybe but rocky road was like wow yeah so nowadays the just look at look at look at ben and jerry's lineup exactly it's like yeah it's kind of it's kind of like oh yeah it's yeah it's uh. so maybe that's what the holiday is to like keep keep the og alive there you know last holiday i'm gonna bring up and i'm a little uh, I don't know how I feel. About it. I mean, I let me just say it first. Okay. It's National um, American Indian Citizenship Day. On Meaning? this day, June 2nd in 1924, the American Indian tribes were officially seen as U.S. citizens. Only in 1924. And also, shouldn't the, the American Indians say that the Europeans are now American I, I know, citizens? I know, I Like... It's funny. I, I get it because it's like talking about lawfully. Like right. You can get your driver's license and stuff. But it's funny that you literally go in. You, you break into someone's house. Right. Start living there. Right. Start changing everything up. And then the person whose house it was, after 100 years, you say, yeah, you can live here if you want. Yeah, you can start getting your mail delivered. <laughs> we accept you. Oh, man. Um, we live on. The, we live in. Sacred ground. Live on the East Coast. Um, the East Coast is the Beast Coast. We live, it's called the Mid-Atlantic States. Where it's, it's the Atlantic Ocean, but we're not very north, like New England, and we're not south at all. We're above the Mason-Dixon line. So where we live, I have never, uh, not that I know of, seen a, a, a true-blooded Native American in real life. I have. Have you? Not in Pennsylvania. That's, yeah. Oh, Colorado. right. So you went to Colorado. Right. So... Um, your cousin just took a trip across the United States and she was through um, Wyoming and I don't know, Idaho. <laughs> she, she went across the yeah. top and uh, she, the further west she went, the more and more Native Americans she saw. And so for people who think like, who cares? Because if you live in the middle of the United States, I guess you're used to it. But we really are not used to seeing Native Americans, even though they were most certainly and definitely where we live. We have a lot of Native American names of towns well, I mean, and cities and rivers it's here. It's not... It's part of the the violent history. Yes, we colonized the colonies and said, "Get out of here!" You have the Trail of Tears and stuff, just pushed, pushing, pushing, yeah. pushing west, and then at, that's like where they had to flee to. Yeah, you and then just, also where probably uh, the American government made the reservations. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah. So national <laughs> uh, Native American citizenship day, which um, I don't know. I think. They were here first. Yeah, I feel very um, warmly, kindly, and um, I find their culture to, towards Native Americans. I find their culture to be extremely interesting. I would love to see um, their uh, when they have performances. Yeah, you know, um, just everything about about them. But we don't have it here, and I have it. I don't really, f- I don't really travel west. So maybe you should. Mm-hmm. Maybe. I just heard something about Native American reservations. Did something just change with them? I don't know. Like they're now allowed to do something. I don't know. I'll have to look it up. But uh, not right now because we have uh, to do something else. Yeah. It is Thursday. It is the best day of the week. The Lord is smiling down upon us. Today, we do a little something special. Yeah. And that something special is called... Walk, Walk through, through Thursday. Thursday. Yay, 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 yay. Roll the intro, please. Welcome back. Hope you're having fun. 
Cuz walk through Wednesday just begun. What is going on, guys? It is walk through Thursday. Only the greatest little segment that we've been doing for about a year. Um, what do we do on walk through Thursday? If you're new here, let me let me fill you in. We open up the Bible. Bible is open. Once the Bible is open, we pick a single verse similar to what you see on the Instagram stories on the daily. We are down to the elite eight vote, vote, vote for your senators and vote for <laughs> the Bible verses. Mm-hmm. And, um, we pick just one verse and we dissect it. We, we slow it down, break yeah. it down, chop it down. Um, the Bible as a whole, the entire thing, powerful, throw it at someone's head. It's going to hurt. Powerful. Yeah. Um, <laughs> metaphorically too. Yeah. Um, and so you can you can have the entire Bible and and live by it, and what you're living by is the overarching themes. Mm-hmm. Now you can also find value in single verses, right? Uh, little mantras. Uh, use it on maybe before a big test or something. A prayer. Mm-hmm. A prayer. Why not? And so we just pick one and we uh we give that some shine. Yeah. Put it on a pedestal and say, I want to know about you today. Right. You know, it's special person's day. It's special verses day. <laughs> um, so today we are going to read one of the verses actually from today's polls. So exactly. if you like today's walk through Thursday, you still have time to go to at Croak and Crow and vote on the polls. Hopefully for this one, because this is the well, one I chose. Well, you know, it is a little unfair because it's not the one well, that I you're, chose. You're winning, you're winning right now. So I think you'll be all right. <laughs> so so we're reading from 1 Timothy. Which also brings up another point. Yo, kick rocks. (laughs) So we get a lot more flack than you think Christians would give. Actually, that's a lie. Um, About saying one and two. Today's polls is one and two. uh, Two Thessalonians. One Samuel. People love to say, what what is is that? They act like they don't. You know when someone knows what you're saying and they're like, like, what are you saying? Tail? What is it? Tail? They know I'm I'm saying towel. What I I don't know two I know the second I know second Timothy. Yeah. What is is two th- is two Timothy a book I've I've never heard of? <laughs> because they want or or maybe is it traditionally people say the first book of Timothy, the second book of Timothy? Uh who knows? And my thing is who bleeping cares? Well, they do, but I don't. Because if you are so bothered by saying first and second Timothy, you know, what I'm going to tell you to do go read the Bible again and tell me if that what commandment says thou shall not none because correctly say God didn't organize the Bible. <sighs> also, we croak and crow talk to and we've said it from the beginning people who don't know how to recite the Bible by heart. Yeah, and one uh, so we're so, we're obviously being a little heated and, and angry, but one of the things that we do always try to promote is say it wrong. Who cares? Is for is the idea of uh, religion, maybe Christianity, feel, almost feels like it's been gate kept. Yes, for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people say they're not religious. Why? Oh, well, because I don't go to mass, and I don't. I, I sometimes I'll go on Christmas and yeah, stuff. Yeah, you don't feel like, confident in it. Yeah, and it's like I don't. I don't know the Bible. And so when you, when you feel like that and when, when, when there are people that say, oh, you're saying that wrong or that's not, that's not how it was, it was said. And it's like, it makes it be like, okay, you know what, whatever. And I'm here to say, you can say one Timothy, first Timothy, uno Timothy, yo. <laughs> yeah, you, right. you can, you can say it however right. you want. If you're getting spiritual you meaning from it, you're getting spiritual meaning from it. Like you're telling me the Bible is so small. Right. I just said it was big, powerful, so small that incorrectly saying one Timothy is going to make you not get something valuable from right. it, not be able to pass on that message. Right. Uh, some people used to listen to the Bible in Latin. Yeah. And I mean, obviously we moved away from it because once again, you're trying to open up the Bible. Right. But even the idea of giving it in Latin is this is sacred words. This right. is a sacred text. One wasn't always one. It was. It's beyond. It was. It was Hebrew. It's beyond the um, letters and numbers. Facts. And you are going to talk about one Timothy because yeah. that's what you're doing. But but my verse was was two Thessalonians, and um when I read it, so it's a letter um to the Thessalonians, and yeah. it, and in it it says, like something like dear Thessal Thessalonica. So I was I was I was tripping over that word, and I thought 
is it Thessaloni Thessalonica because it's Thessalonians or yeah. is it Thessalonica? And then I was like, yeah. I don't know. And I just kept reading. You just kept reading. So. All right. Well, that's our little spiel. Read the Bible however you want. Pronounce anything however you want. If you're getting meaning from it, then it's working for you, to you, by you. Anyway, we are reading 1 Timothy. Don't forget, 412. Yeah. April 12th. Yeah. <clears throat> Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Right. Okay, I have two things to say. Let's hear it. One is um, when you did the reel, because don't just look at our stories, look at our reels. Look at the reels. You can see this face. You read read them every day. Um, The the closed captioning uh, thought you were saying impurity as one in, uh, I am and impurity. impurity, but that's that's different. But this is what I want to say. When I first saw the quote that you picked, I thought, hmm, huh, it's a little bit niche, isn't it? It says, uh, don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. I thought, well, what about the people who aren't so young? And then I realized, or I didn't realize, but I thought, and I am now believing that uh, it could be young in your faith. Like yeah. if what we just talked about, if we just started, we didn't go to Bible um, college and we didn't learn the way everyone says first and second, one and two. So we are young in learning the Bible and learning. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it doesn't have to be. Yeah. That this is only talking to teenagers. No. And, 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 and yeah, I mean, kind of goes exactly what we were just saying about one and two. It's and you have to think about it from the time. You know, the Bible is an everlasting word. But you have to always think about it at the time. What what like the old the all the scholars were old. It was these old people who knew the practices right. by heart, and it was would look down on someone young not because of their age, you're a child, but because right. of their. That's a very good way to think about it. You're right because of their lack of of knowledge and like well, years of experience. Yeah, you're like how how are you going to? And it's saying don't let anyone look down on you because of that. Don't let anyone look down on you because they they think they know it better. They've been doing it longer. Right. And then second part okay. is literally what we always say, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Set an example. It, like, right. It's sort of saying, like, it, it, the, the young thing is, I think, about that literal knowledge, wisdom. Like, I have years of, 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 of analytical knowledge right. that I can give. And it's saying, don't let then that those people say you don't have that, so I'm not going to listen to you. And how are you going to get them to listen to you? Because you might be like, there, there are people that are young in faith that we were like, we were just talking. I feel like we're always talking about the thing beforehand. Yeah, coincidentally. I know. I know. Holy Spirit, activate. I see you. Um, and so it's like, well, I, I don't want to, you know, say things in the Bible because I might get it wrong. And it's right. like, well, you're not, you're not trying to do that. How are you going to promote the Bible? By was setting an example, example. Of, of the way you live, the way you, right. you speak, conduct, in, uh, in conduct, in love, and in faith, and purity. And someone, and it's the believers that are going to say, look at that. Yeah. There's two people there. Yeah, uh, Mr. Rogers. Is, yeah. I, I do think we talked about him yesterday. We'll talk about him every day. <laughs> um, he definitely followed this. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, and, and let people not say, that person knows how to pronounce every word from the bible i'm gonna listen to them let the people say that person's a great person right oh and they're also promoting you know christianity or spirituality or faith and that is is, and so don't ever let the those kind of people put you down and say oh well actually well actually actually it's like well listen you can do what you want i'm spreading the bible just by the way i live right because that's what's really important yeah, you can't stop someone from putting you down. Yeah. But don't let it make you feel insecure. Or small. Yeah. Uh, you, another, you're young and small, right? Like right. When, when you think of don't let someone look down on you because you're young, I imagine like a child looking up at an adult. Right. And I think it's very easy. It's actually, it's why I read the Bible, right? I read the Bible cover to cover. <laughs> um, it was because any kind of um, church and any denomination I went to, I always felt that small to big. Right. If they're if they're you know the the, the minister or the priest or the uh, monk, <laughs> um, I spent some time in a monastery. Okay. 
the nun. It could be women, you know. So even even as a big strong man, it's like I need to listen to you because I'm I'm small. Right. You're telling. You're talking to me, down to me. You're right. talking down to me, and I have to listen. Right. And there was something about reading the Bible and am I arguing that I am as am I arguing that I am as knowledgeable? I knew I knew a lot of uh, some professors I had were were fluent in Hebrew and Latin, and right. so they were really like. Yeah. I would never argue that, but right. it was this. It, it it was well. I know when I I still enjoy going to church. Yes, but I enjoy it differently. Right, and the what I mean by that is I enjoy it as I am here. In, <clears throat> I am here in another equal human being that is not chosen or like. I mean, you know, they've been called to faith. I'm not saying that. Yeah. There, there's there's not tears. They don't have inside information. Yeah. yeah. It's like you're equal as one of God's children. Right. Speaking and you can hear things. It can open up your mind. It can be like, oh, I agree with that. I don't agree with that. It, it changes that perspective. Right. Of, I'm no longer going to let myself. Because it's, it's not always them looking down on you. No. It's you feeling like you're being That's looked down That's what I meant. Upon. Yeah. Like you can't ever stop someone from doing anything. But you can yeah. stop yourself from feeling a certain way about it. Yeah. Um, and, and if you are coming from the secular world um, mindset, you know, so if you if you if your doctor scientific world, if said tells you something, he's going he is going to know something about what he learned in school about your health, your body, yeah. you know, medication, whatever. And you would defer to this professional because they have they can perform surgery and you can't. But. A, 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 a church leader or a pastor, a spiritual mentor is not going to be the surgeon patient yeah. relationship. And also, yeah, because I mean, the things that tells you to do mm-hmm. is all the things that the Bible is actually promoting, right? Like right. It, it, it's saying uh, in speech and conduct and love and faith and impurity. And so anything that, that someone with more knowledge tells you, you can take on knowledge basis. Right. But in your heart, what it means to be a good Christian, right. a good spiritual person, is by walking in these things. Right. And what you walk in these things, you don't let anyone look down on you. You are promoting Christianity right. through example. Now it's still great to learn, you know, like uh, musicians. Yeah, there's always more to m- learn. Musicians yeah. still go to um, music theory class. Yeah. And it's like, all right, but also just play from your heart. And it's like they right. still learn. No, that's true. They still learn the analytical, like. Yes, someone you're right. Could, someone could learn piano by ear, right? And then that's what it's saying. It's like, don't let someone look down on you um, because, oh, you don't know the keys. You can still learn the keys. It's valuable right. information. If you're going to pass it on, if you're going to continue it, but it's still all about just playing from the heart. You're absolutely right. Even um, learning another language until you can think in that language, you know, you can't just keep translating and like, this yeah. is what I learned. So that's what it means. This is what I learned. So that's what it means. You're not going to become fluent. You have to think in the language. You have to just let it flow, you know? Let it flow. But, uh, So yeah. what is it? Speech? Speech. With how you're talking. Conduct. Conduct, how you're acting. How you're acting. Uh, love. Love. Obviously. Love, which absolutely, you, it seems obvious, but also sometimes it's not obvious because you get tied up with yeah. um, judgment and you realize you're being more judgmental than loving. And Faith. Faith believing um i think that was that was the quote from yesterday wasn't it It had something to do with um you you had it up there hebrews like believing in what you cannot see yes and in purity and impurity so so just pure you know like as much as you can you know without sin and just like living a clean life of like a pure heart you know like child yeah exactly it's like the yeah you know not lying and all those things where you can just Anything your conscience is telling you, it's like things that are purity. Right, right. Um, Makes you an expert. Yeah. 10,000 hours. Um, all right, guys. That has been fun. We will be back tomorrow for Dr. Seuss Friday. Do we have a book? No. Not yet. <laughs> We're going to get one, though. The pickings are getting slim. The slim, I told you the that. The slim are getting pickings. Slim pickings. We'll be back tomorrow. Um, be there. Be square. Go over to the Instagram and vote on the polls. Uh Preferably for 1 Timothy 4.12. Or, or maybe for um, 2 Thessalonians. Or maybe um, for some people who are sticklers, First Timothy. I'm willing to like shoot all <laughs> oh, angles. Oh, yeah, yeah. Make everyone happy. All right, guys. Peace.